The most versatile instrument in any spellcaster's toolbox are force spells, the ability to push and pull objects at will. Now there are four types of force spells. First up is gravity, which I presume you're already familiar with. Anyways, gravity spells have the benefit of being extremely versatile. Anything in the universe with mass, which is everything, is affected by gravity. Additionally, the force of gravity travels at the speed of light and affects objects at an infinite distance. There's also no way to deflect, absorb, or shield yourself from gravity, meaning gravity spells are usable in any situation and will be completely unavoidable by an opponent. There are two types of gravity spells, gravity and anti-gravity. Gravity attracts matter and repels antimatter, meanwhile anti-gravity repels matter and attracts antimatter. But because there is no naturally occurring antimatter in the universe, you can simply think of gravity as a pull spell and anti-gravity as a push spell. Something to note is that gravity spells affect objects in all directions, so always be aware of your surroundings. Otherwise, you end up having your poor cat chucked to the back of your head when all you're trying to do is get the remote. Now, as useful as gravity spells can be, they do have some drawbacks. The biggest problem is that gravity is the weakest of the four forces. So as unavoidable as gravity is, it's very easy to overpower. And all of the four forces' powers are dependent on distance. Gravity's range is infinite, but it's an already weak force that only gets weaker the farther away you are from the source. By creating a gravity spell that's equal to the 6 trillion trillion kilograms of the Earth below us, we are just barely able to float above the ground. Gravity spells can be extremely useful, but it takes a lot for them to be useful. On the other hand... <laughs> sorry. On the other hand, electromagnetism is a trillion, trillion, trillion times stronger than the force of gravity. It's so powerful that a cheap pocket magnet can more than easily overcome the gravitational force of the entire Earth. Plus, like gravity, electromagnetic spells have an infinite range of effect. Electromagnetic spells also come in a pair, positive and negative. These are called charges. Same charges repel and opposite charges attract. Simple. Now, the downside of electromagnetic spells is that for as powerful as they are, they're not as unstoppable as gravity. Electromagnetic spells can be blocked, absorbed, and deflected. Also, electromagnetism lacks the versatility that gravity has. Gravity is useful because everything has mass. That's why everything in the room floated with a gravity spell from earlier. In contrast, nothing in this room is affected by this positive charge spell, and that's because nothing around us has a charge. Same charges repel, different charges attract, and zero charges do nothing. Something needs a charge to be affected by the spell. Here, go put a positive charge on that desk. Now that the desk is charged, it's affected by the spell. That's how you make electromagnetic spells useful. Now if I were to change the charge of my spell, it would attract the desk instead of repel it. And see how the spell vanished? When two opposite charges collide, they neutralize each other and return to having no charges. Something to keep in mind. Also, be very careful using electromagnetic spells to attract objects. You have to keep the charges on the objects and prevent the charges from jumping to each other. If the charges jump, you get a lightning spell. Fun, but not always desirable. The next two types of force spells have tiny ranges that only work on an atomic scale. So for this next part of our lesson, I will first be demonstrating the quantum space spell. Quantum space is a spell that temporarily brings the quantum world to us, making our world follow the laws of the quantum world, so we can take full advantage of its insanity. Oh, hey, this is perfect. If you look over there, you'll see the nucleus of an oxygen atom. Positively charged protons and neutrally charged neutrons are packed together with a tremendous force. But what force? Electromagnetism says that all those positively charged particles should be flying apart. There's something powerful there, something so powerful in fact, that the mighty electromagnetic force is rendered helpless. That would be the strong force. It's a force with a very short range, but within that range, it's unchallenged as the most powerful of the four force spells you can learn. It's the ultimate pull spell, but again, it has a very limited range, and it will only affect particles made up of quarks, so you have to learn about particle types to make the most use of it. And last for today is the weak force spell. Now don't let the name fool you. The weak force isn't the weakest of the four forces, it just has the smallest range of use, about a thousand times smaller than the strong force's range. There's a couple of uses for the weak force. We can use it to change certain particles into different particles. For example, this is a neutron, but by using a weak spell on it, we can change it into a proton. The weak force is also responsible for radioactive decay in atoms. 
Under the right circumstances, we can use the weak spell to create atomic explosions in the quantum space. Pretty neat, wouldn't you say? The downsides with weak spells, however, is that the weak force is the pickiest of the four forces we've discussed. It only affects certain particles, it only affects particles with a certain spin, and its effects are the most random. I mean, it's quantum physics, pretty much everything is random here. It also seems to have more of an impact on antiparticles than regular particles, but don't worry too much about that one. So if you find yourself in a duel, I would say make use of the weak spells as much as you can, but never rely too heavily on them. And that's been our lesson for today. Your homework will be to conjure a basic version of each of the four force spells by our next class. Stay safe. Ah, shoot. I broke my photo of Master Kinwin. Hmm. I wonder what he's up to. Thank you for watching to the end of episode one of Spellcasting Science. This project was a lot of work and a ton of fun to make. And if you would like to support future projects, the best ways are to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and share on social media. I've got a lot of future plans, and your support helps make these possible. Thank you, and goodbye.